Hey, look at this hat. Look at this shirt. You guys see it? I don't think you do. There you go. Right there. That's where I work now, y'all. In case you're wondering where to track me down. Um, so, I was wrong. It's always exciting when that happens. Um, I'm usually right about pretty much everything. And my predictions are always negative. Um, but I'm happy to say that this is the first time, well, I don't want to say the first time, but um, one of the few times in my life that I've been wrong. That job's fucking awesome. So, uh, <laughs> yes, get to the point. Please get to the point. Uh, <laughs> put your seatbelt on, damn it. No insurance. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, the place is slow as fuck. Like, they are so fucking slow. But, uh, this kid that trained me was, like, really, really awesome. I have so much hope in Gen Z. This kid was so freaking smart. Doesn't believe in psychi psych 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 psychiatric drugs. talked about GMOs. I mean, I'm always impressed when people even know about GMOs. I mean, they talk about GMOs all the time, but it's like most people just don't care, you know? They're just like, whatever. Um, I really like my Fritos. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, what was I saying? I don't know what you were saying. Jesus. The job's good. The job's good! But I, I'm leaving right now because it's too slow and he's having me come back in a few hours when business picks up a little bit so that way I can actually be trained to do stuff rather than just stand around. Um, but everything's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like steak and shake in that way, only they don't have pictures of everything. They just tell you like what, what you have to do. They tell you all the ingredients you put on stuff. Um, But, uh, yeah, I guess I'll probably know more, you know, when it's a little busier. But it's cool because they, they pay every week. They give you paper checks. So old school, right? That's pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked now. Mainly because I, I'm going to get paid every single week. That's exciting. But I'm, I'm only going to start with like a couple shifts a week. And if I start with a couple shifts a week, then... then um, that's cool. Because then I'll... I won't like, you know, bog myself down with work. Extra work. Yeah, this, this actually is, like, really, really convenient. Like, super convenient. Like, I have this other shift, like, later this week with this coffee shop. I'm just going to work, like, one day. <laughs> it is going to be annoying, though, whenever you do your taxes. Just keep that shit in mind. Yeah, it will, but it's okay. At least I'll be making more money. Um... Maybe I can pay that bill if they come after me. Um, I was going to say something earlier, and I finally remembered what it was. Um, today is July 1st. In a few days, it will be July 4th, um, which will be the mark of celebrating our independence from Britain. <laughs> Yay! Um, so I just started really reading uh, The Federalist, 
which is a collection of essays about the Constitution written by uh, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay. Um, it's so weird that I am way more interested in history than I've ever been. Like, I mean, I liked reading about history. You know, like when I was in school, I thought I thought it was interesting. Oh shit! Almost ran off the curb, you guys. Y'all witnessed that? Cool. Well, yeah. So, what was I saying? <laughs> you already lost your train of thought. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, like, uh, I, th I thought U.S. history was pretty interesting, but I think that they give you, like, sort of the, the skinny version of it. They don't, uh, they don't tell you, like, the whole story, you know, um, the U.S. is, is like, a joke. I mean, it, it's cool, like, I think that the idea of America was, like, really awesome. But the biggest issue is the fact that, you know, for a very long time, a lot of people that live in this country were horribly discriminated against and, um, you know, enslaved and thrown into internment camps and shit like that, you know, so it's like people can talk about freedom and, you know, liberty and all that shit, but it's like, well, if a lot of the citizens that live here didn't experience that, then it's kind of a moot point, don't you think? I mean, for a long time, I, I hated America, you know, I, I thought that America was just evil, evil, evil. Um... It is possible to appreciate living here and appreciate all the freedoms that you have um, without being, you know, an ignoramus. And, uh, I don't know, I realized, like, if I had lived at any other time, you know, I would be fine. You know, even though I'm a woman and... A lot of people think that the women have it so hard. You know, they had it just as hard as blacks and Indians and Japanese uh, Americans, but um, we really didn't have it that hard. Um, sure, it, you know, it, it, it was allowable to beat the fuck out of your wife. Um, that was one of the main reasons for, like, prohibition. Like, women thought that if men weren't allowed to drink, then they wouldn't get beat up as much. But I'm like, yeah, well, when you whine all the time, you're going to get beat up no matter what. But uh, <laughs> you are so sexist. Like, I, I swear to God, like, you are not sexist. Like, are, you are not not sexist. You are not, never mind. <laughs> I am not not sexist for five minutes out of the day. Like, it's, it's almost impossible for me to not be sexist. And you can say, oh, that's wrong. It's like, well... Trust me, I know so many women that are like me, okay? There are so many of us that are tired of women's bullshit. And it's not just about all these stupid movements. It, I mean, it's the gossip. It's the tearing down somebody's character. You know, you see it all the time. I mean, I find it funny that, like, men, they just, they accuse me of that. And it's like they... They don't understand how bad it is for women. Like, I've been more mistreated by women than, than anyone. I mean, I, th I think it's because, like, society sort of, like, caters to this behavior and just allows people to play the victim. People will continue to play the victim if you don't call them out on that shit. Um, that's common fucking sense, y'all. But I think I'm going to write a book called Uncommon Sense you know, from the mentally ill perspective. Like, there's so many things that I could teach the world, really and truly. But, uh, anyway.
What was I talking about? Doesn't matter. It probably doesn't. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I'm probably going to spend the remainder of the day putting up more YouTube videos because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do it because I really don't want to do it because it terrifies me. This idea of like revealing myself. But I feel like it's a lot better to do that than, you know, to just spend the rest of my life internalizing everything and living in my head like everybody else is doing. Uh, Anyway, what was I talking about? <laughs> my life is a lot like the movie Memento. It's just because of my ADD. It's not just because like the weed is finally leaving my system. It'll probably take me like, pro like another six months to be able to pass a drug test. Even then it's like, it's kind of a moot point because I still like take CBD every so often and that has a very small trace of THC, but probably enough you know, to prevent me from being able to pass a drug test. Not that I'm going to get a government job, but, you know, it's just, you know, for future reference. Don't try to recommend me for a job where I have to pass a piss test, because I probably won't. Definitely not a hair test. There's no fucking way. <sighs> What was I talking about? Isn't that cool? I love places that'll give you a fucking hat. And it's not a visor. Fuck visors. I believe that Carlin already made a very, very important point about visors. What is the point in wearing half of a hat? Exactly. go back to the store and ask them for the rest of the hat. Or you get one of those little Jewish hats. <laughs> Where's Ben Shapiro? Um, but anyway. I want you guys to watch me eat this. Just to know that I'm not anorexic anymore. I was never bulimic. I don't understand bulimics in the slightest. I hate throwing up. Like I would rather like just feel like shit all fucking day than throw up. Uh, it's just terrible. Even though you feel better afterwards, it's just like, God, I don't want to go through this. But. <sighs> oh, yeah. I'm going to say this. July 1st marks the end of Pride Month. Yay! Now, I hear about the straight Pride Parade going on. I just find it fucking hilarious. Mainly because of how many people are getting mad about it. Like, I, I think the whole idea is stupid, but I think gay pride is stupid too. I get, you know, not being ashamed to be gay. That's cool. I think after about a year, after you come out of the closet, you should probably stop being prideful to be gay. You know, it's just, it just seems stupid to me. And you can say, how dare you? How dare you? You have no idea how hard it is to come out of the closet. Here's the thing. I came out of the closet when I was in the seventh grade. Um, my best friend at the time responded by buying me a teen study Bible, okay? Um, her dad was a preacher. My other best friend, who was completely against homosexuality, thought that homosexuals and sodomites were all gonna burn in hell for all eternity. She was still willing to be friends with me, we just didn't talk about it, right? Well, I came out in the 7th grade as bisexual. Not a lesbian, bisexual. Hold on a second. 
My parents, of course, thought that I was just going through a phase. Um, and personally, I mean, I don't like women enough to be a full-on lesbian. Lesbians kind of freak me out, especially feminist ones. Get the fuck away from me. Um, oh, I don't hate women, though. That's the thing. I just criticize them. I criticize them because I think that they don't hear criticism enough. They need to learn how to take it, and then they improve their behavior, and then I won't criticize them anymore. There are plenty of women I love dearly. They're fucking awesome. They're interesting. They're funny. They work really hard. Mainly, they act like guys. Like, and by that, I mean they're strong. They're strong. You can't wither at the slightest amount of criticism and call everybody that criticizes you sexist and then say that you're brave, courageous, and strong. You can't fucking do that. I mean, the pussy hat, I feel like it's, it's about right, because you are a fucking pussy. Anybody that wears a pussy hat is a fucking pussy. If they can't handle the president making some inappropriate, yeah, I, I would say it's inappropriate or, you know, sounds misogynist. I don't think it's misogynist. Uh, so what? He made a fucking comment, like, 12 years ago that he shouldn't have made about a bunch of Hollywood phonies and how fucking trashy and sleazy they are. I mean, that's who he was really talking about. Sorry, gross myself out a lot, but I am Amy Gross, so it's acceptable. Um, it's like, I just don't understand. I don't understand this obsession that people have with something like, oh my God, seven years ago, this guy smacked my ass at a party when I was really drunk. Oh my God, I'm such a victim. Men take advantage all the time. It's like women that live in like third world countries, I'm sure. I'm sure if they, if they got whiff of this shit, they would not stop laughing about it because it's, it's just absolutely absurd the kind of shit that women will complain about in a first world country. Um, but I think of all of the marginalized groups, we are like the last one that needs to bitch. Um, I think even gay people have experienced it worse. But, it's just, I don't understand this pride shit. I mean, with gays, it's like, well, if they've been forced into a closet their entire life because of their religious parents or, you know, like, people just not accepting them, not accepting, like, who they are attracted to, like, I get that that's, that's hard. And, um... I mean, I've just, I never really understood why, why people freak out about that. It's like if your friend comes out to you as a pedophile, I would freak out a lot more, you know? Like, oh, wow, you're attracted to kids? That's fucked up. I just want to lump all these things in the same category. They're trying to say that a guy who's like 25 and fucks another guy who at least is of legal age Consensually, that's the same fucking thing as um, a 40 year old fucking a seven year old and having to manipulate and exploit that seven year old. That's the same fucking thing. Um, but see, this is liberalism. It's like this idea of like open mindedness. But it's like this isn't open minded, this is just fucking retarded, okay? I'm really, I'm the most open minded person over me. I'll hang out with anybody. I'll talk to anybody. I'll give anybody a drink, anybody a pocket key, you know? It's like, I am very um, easygoing. I mean, that's anybody that knows me. I may seem like a cunt in these videos, but you hung out with me, it's so chill, man. So chill, with or without the weed. But, it's like all these people, they're, they're just acting a fool. They're acting so crazy and they want a reward for that. It's like the more oppressed you are. The, <laughs> let's take that back. The more pretend oppressed you are, the more shit you can get from the government. The more sympathy you can get from people that don't know much how, how much of a lying sack of shit you really are. Um, people that are truly oppressed don't get to complain about it. Yeah, that's 
Right. <laughs> Look at these brownies, you guys. They're not pot brownies. I made them for my parents, so they cannot be pot brownies. Uh, they're Ghirardelli. Okay, so I made a comment in the last video I posted entitled UBI. Um, the Universal Basic Income Needs a Manual, that same video. I said something that was factually incorrect and I just want to correct myself here. I know that I put this stuff in my little, you know, description of the video, like when I, you know, do my ADD explanation of everything that I talk about. But, um, canola oil is not made from corn. <laughs> See, this bothers me. It bothers me when I say something factually incorrect. This is why this culture drives me fucking crazy. Because any time that I'm wrong about something, and it's not like, oh, I hate being wrong. It's like, if I say something and it's a blatant fucking lie, I feel horrible about it. Even if it's unintentional. Like if I tell somebody like, hey, yeah, I put ketchup in the bag, but I didn't put ketchup in the bag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel like shit for the rest of the night. I'm gonna beat myself up for the rest of the night because I, unintentionally lie to somebody. And I realize that I make mistakes and I realize I should probably, you know, back off myself a little bit. Like, calm down, Amy, it's, it's not a big of a deal. But it, I mean, it's just the little things, you know, that really get to me. I'm a very efficient person. So if I don't uh, live up to my full potential and do the things that I say I'm gonna do, then, then what leg do I have to stand on? You know what I mean? No, you don't. I don't think that other people have the standards that I have for myself. Um, but I realized last night something that really comforted me because I was getting pissed off at some of my coworkers last night. And I just asked God for calm. I said, God, please just help me do my job without being fucking angry because I've got to be here for another like six to seven hours. Um, and it was like immediately. You guys, prayer works. And y'all don't have to believe in God to pray. Let me tell you. It was weird because I was looking through some of my old videos last night. And I was like, wow, my mind has changed on a lot of things. I got all these videos about how I don't believe in God, I believe in myself. But that's funny because Jesus said that we can all be gods. Thanks, oh Lord. Um, living proof, baby, I'm living proof. <sighs> I'm my own president. But, um, what was I saying? I have no idea. Rape seed. Canola oil is made from rapeseed. Rapeseed is a genetically modified uh, product. It's a genetically modified seed that supposedly has weeded out the um, uh, undesirable qualities of the rapeseed. But <laughs> I think that just the term rapeseed, that should be questionable, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> that's just funny. There's so many jokes there, baby. There really are. Um, but yeah, I had to clarify that. Um, that was right though. You cannot trust canola oil. So if it says not GMO, that's bullshit. If it's got canola oil in it, they're fucked. I mean, not fucked, but you know, they're lying pretty much. Um, tell them what you thought last night. That was brilliant. Okay. Last night. It was a very libertarian thought that I had, go figure. But it's like, I got mad. I was getting mad at my coworkers because I thought they were being lazy. And um, personal pet peeve of mine, because I'm a, I'm a dishwasher part-time. By part-time, I mean like, I fluctuate. That's one of the many jobs that I do. Um, at both my jobs now. I'll probably do it at the third job as well. But, um, one thing that annoys me is like when people don't like take the food off their plates, it's not that hard. You just fucking scrape the shit into the trash can. It's, it's actually very simple. It takes like a millisecond. At least it does when I, when I do it. But I, I realize that it probably could, it takes other people like at least five minutes. Uh, but it's just like little things, you know? Just, just scrape your damn plate off. Just take the, take the little straw out of the, out of the drink. It's not that hard. But a lot of people just don't, they don't have that kind of, you know, like, hey, I, I should probably do that. That would make the dishwasher's job easier. And see, that, that's how I look at things. I'm like, how, how can I do things to make somebody else's life easier? So in that regard, I think I'm, I'm a socialist, you know? Uh, but 
I, uh, I, uh, I realize that a lot of people, they, they, they look at things like, oh, that's your job. You know, I'm going to do my job, you do your job. And I get that. I get that kind of mindset. But something that really comforted me last night, and I, I believe that, that the good Lord gave me this, this uh, comforting thought. Why the fuck do you expect other people to work like you? You work like you. They work like them. This person is going to be themselves. They're not going to be you. Like, you can get mad all day that other people don't think like you, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, a lot of people tell me I like the way you think. Those people are always libertarians. Um, and the best libertarians are ones that don't know that they're libertarians. I think that's what it takes to be an actual libertarian is just to live the libertarian philosophy. Not necessarily like be a political libertarian because personally, I don't agree with any of these protest rallies. Uh, like the Tea Party, you know, that, that sort of emerged from, from conservatives and uh, the, the resurgence of the Tea Party anyway. Uh, emerged from conservatives and, and libertarians uh, back, you know, when Obama was in office and their taxes were being hiked the fuck up and there were all these government regulations. Now, of course, the mainstream media didn't, you know, talk about this movement anywhere near as much as they talked about the Occupy movement. And uh, they're never going to talk about, you know, the, the pro-life march, you know, the March for Life, which is literally the longest uh, protest. Like, it, it's been going on since... 73, I think, or no, 74, 74, because Roe v. Wade happened in 73. Um, I think, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. January 22nd, 73, that's when Roe v. Wade was instated. Um, but 74, they've been doing this march for a long fucking time. And it doesn't get anywhere near as much media coverage as March for Our Lives and the Women's March. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Just a bunch of women marching. Like, there's not even a point, uh, but... <laughs> Uh, what else? What else got S super duper media coverage? Um, uh, the uh, fuck. Well, Black Lives Matter, of course. Black Lives Matter. It's not that I don't understand why black people are mad. I'd be mad too. Like if I if I were actually black, I would be. Like I've I've said this before. I would I would be way more than Candace Owens. Like, I I understand why she's so mad. Um, but, uh, I, I think that they've missed the mark with Black Lives Matter. I think that they don't, they, they don't understand that government is the problem, not the solution. Um, and not to say that the government couldn't possibly do good things, but those people that are working for them got to have better intentions. And then we can talk about that. But until that happens, um, I mean, do people have the power to govern themselves? Do they have the sense to govern themselves? Probably not. I mean, just, just looking at how much people play the victim, um, this is a question that Alexander Hamilton asked. And I haven't even gotten to his essays, and I already know that shit because I just finished this other book on U.S. history by a woman named Jill Lepore, who's a progressive uh, U.S. history professor at Harvard. So I figured that I'd read an 800-page book by a progressive woman you know, rather than just keep reading, you know, conservative critiques by, uh, you know, white men. So, um, anyway. Word to the wise, by the wise. If you put a sandwich in the fridge, it's going to be all soggy and shit. Don't do that. For future ref, I'm not going to do that. I hope I watch this video before I do that. Um. You know, you could just pick out the chicken and eat the chicken. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm not eating that bread. Nasty shit. Soggy. Soggy as fuck. Um, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, in case you're wondering. It's so weird. I used to hate that sandwich, but now I love it. I used to get sick just smelling it. But my tastes have changed quite a bit. I was thinking about how few people live their life and, like, change at all. But, like... I guess because I'm always shifting, I'm always like evolving, I'm able to learn and grow. And a lot of people don't want to do that because it's uncomfortable. But making yourself uncomfortable is probably the smartest thing you can do. Which is why I tell people if they want to quit smoking, they want to quit drinking, anything, make it hard. 
my friend quit smoking. Shout out to Jesse Lavasser. She lives in Los Angeles. And if you're uh, into uh, a private chef, you should check her out. Sorry, y'all. No, that was gross to watch. Uh, <laughs> Wayfaring chef. Look her up. So if you want her to do some catering for you, I'm sure she's great. I mean, everything that she's fed me has been wonderful. She does these like bacon cupcakes are off the chain. She also makes beer ice cream, like Guinness ice cream. She promised me that alcohol was cooked out. I believed her and I ate it. And then my sponsor like yelled at me about it. I was like, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. And she didn't. I was like, I think I trust a chef more than I trust some stupid recovering alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> So there's a problem with, with recovery is that people think they know everything. They don't. That's the whole thing about it. You have to be willing to learn and grow. Like if you're not willing to do that, you're not recovered. You know, I mean, you're not, you're not humble, you know? And so people think that they know everything. People that have their mind made up. These are the most dangerous people in the world. Like, I'll trust anybody to ask a question over somebody that thinks they got it all figured out. And it's funny because these very people, they want to act like they're all spiritual and shit, but I'm like, you're not really that spiritual if you're yelling at somebody for asking a question just because they don't go along with your chosen interpretation of something. It's, it's like the same shit that I dealt with when I went to church. Why the fuck would I want to deal with it in church basement? You know, with a bunch of fucking whiny recovery alcoholics that want to act like they don't play the victim anymore when they, that's what they clearly are continuing to do. That's why I quit going. Um... My YouTube channel should just be called The Ongoing Rant. I was like... I don't know how the fuck's not rant about shit. I was telling God yesterday. I was like, you know, maybe up in heaven, my brain will just fucking stop. You know, it won't just keep going and going and going and going and going. I'm gonna eat brownie. You wanna say hi? Hello. Arlo. <laughs> Paisley. Paisley. <laughs>